medicine has been evolving in technological sense over the years. Not 50 years ago, practitioners believed that fixing issues with the heart was not possible. And nowadays we perform open heart surgery thanks to technological breakthroughs such as the heart murder. Nowadays surgeons can perform keyhole surgery using the Da Vinci robot, where instead of opening up a patient, only three holes need to be created, one for each arm and one for the camera. This in turn causes surgeons to look at an operation in a different way. The camera they use only allows them to see a small portion of the heart and they lose depth perception. If a detailed MRI scan can be fed into a machine that would generate a realistic and accurate 3D representation of the area of interest, surgeons would have a better understanding of how to tackle a problem. In its most basic application, it could even offer depth perception to Da Vinci operators. Two main factors one would expect from a VR trainer would be the increase in patient safety and the decrease of cost associated with training. If a tool can be created in a virtual setting that allows for doctors to learn, experiment, repeat procedures without endangering a patient, the first checkbox can be ticked. By programming the tool to not only present everyday cases but also unique situations, it would allow for quicker decision making when it comes to a life situation. For the other factor, we must consider the cost involved and time involved training a doctor. Currently in the United Kingdom, medical students must complete workplace based training under the UK Foundation programme after medical school where they take on supervised responsibility for patient care and consolidate the skills that they have learned at medical school. This does mean, however, that the students have very limited exposure to real-life situations prior to the programme. Some universities do perform autopsies and allow students to experience the sights and smells that come with dealing with the sick, but the main source of knowledge comes from medical papers and books. If these students could learn through a specially designed tool, which would allow them to review and test their knowledge without the need for a human body, it wouldn't only cut down the cost, but also introduce a new dimension of learning, taking it out from a two-dimensional textbook and into a three-dimensional virtual world. So let's look at the costs. The current cost of training a doctor can be anything between £240,000 up to £510,000. Tuition fees account for nearly £44,000 for over five years. Cost of living account for almost £62,000. In total, five years of studying medicine at a university is estimated to have cost almost £250,000 in 2014-2015. Once they have completed their foundation training years at university, the cost would have risen to £312,000. This cost could be lowered with the use of VR headsets. Students could attend their classes from home through virtually created classrooms. Medical apparatus could be modelled and introduced via this method, thus acquiring them within total the university's budget. Students could train with a multitude of visual aids, textbook illustrations could come to life, and the viewer could walk around them. But that's all for medical students. What about the general public? First aid training involves a practice dummy that could cost an upwards of £500, on top of which you need a professional who is trained and certified to teach. You will need a place to practice, and there is a difference in what depth you want people to be trained in. This leads to growing costs at the detriment of people wanting to learn life-saving skills. Imagine a situation where training to become a qualified first aider at work no longer takes you 10 hours away from your workplace. Rather, you can train at home in a virtual setting either offline or online with other people. And you would only have to go and take the test in person. The training itself would be fun, enjoyable, you would earn points, like a video game, as you learn. Dr. Rafael Olaya had the same vision and have been taking steps towards turning this into a reality. When you talk about making it into a video game, and what you're talking about essentially is gamification. Gamification is a wonderful technique which is capitalised upon by the business sector. The business sector is a very broad sector management more particularly, to take advantage of, as humans, our inclination to progress through whatever we're doing and also have rewards, have feedback and know how far we are to finishing what we're on. And these are just some of the factors of gamification and applying that to virtual reality for medical education. The example you said, first aid, is a fantastic opportunity and that's been one of the main aspects that we wanted to involve in our programs with Medigage. So you say, you say 10 hours, you know, let's talk about specifics. The emergency first aid at work is a three-day course. Each day takes six hours. 
18 hours and assessment at the end. 18 hours and there would be some study at home. So let's say let's say 25 hours to really be competent at being first aid at work. That doesn't involve advanced life support. That course itself, a lot of the time it's very expensive. It can be over a thousand pounds. The trainer's got to be qualified. And lots of these people that are doing the course, they're stopping what they're doing in their own professional lives to do this because it's needed. So there's a lot of cost there, number one. And of course, a lot of these people that have to do the course and the people that have to pay the employer that pays for that course, they're dragging their feet, so to speak, because they need to do it, but it's just, it's not really an enjoyable thing. It's just ticking the book. So if there was a way to make it more engaging, to gamify it, to make it enjoyable, and to add a social element to it, I think virtual reality has a massive opportunity there. With Medigage, our first product at www.medigage.co.uk is basic life support, it's gamified. Ways of gamification are very creative as well. So there's there's ways to do it that I haven't even been exposed yet. So gamification can never be forgotten when it comes to using virtual reality for medical education. As virtual reality technology is so new to the market, there are no figures on whether using VR increases patient safety, decreases cost, or better trains doctors when it comes to medicine. However, in this case, we can look at industries that have been using simulators for years now, commercial airline training and Formula One track training. One must keep in mind though, that a couple of hours in the simulator does not replace skills learned on the job. And this is true for medical training as well. David Ryan, Director of Flight Operations for San Diego-based corporation and Vice Chairman of the NBAA Safety Committee says that simulator-based training is required to further skill sets but there is a whole list of other things one would need to learn outside of simulation. Whilst these programs are ideal to train pilots for different procedures like an engine failing mid-air, situations which would be extremely pricey if done in real life, it cannot be a substitute. This becomes extremely apparent in the medical field, where with current virtual reality technologies we are able to trick the mind into perceiving the patient in front of us as real, but it cannot simulate what is not programmed ahead of time. Imagine a situation where a patient walks in and complains about a rash. In the program we could establish how the rash looks, the patient's reaction to the rash appearing, and also put in extra variables regarding the patient's thoughts and emotional state. However, humans are much more insecure. We withhold information that we find embarrassing at times from the very people that are trying to help us. This in turn could lead to misdiagnosing the patient based on the facts. And how do we code the human factor into virtual training programs? As Dr. Raphael has pointed out in an online article, currently we lack the artificial intelligence that would be able to bridge the gap. So let's say we get our hands on this artificial intelligence and we set up our systems. Is there a risk involved? 100% that definitely there's risk with everything. First risk is that going along the wrong track of developing virtual reality and putting lots of resources and finance in developing something which isn't as effective as it could be. People who have the power to invest and develop, they, they see the, the financial incentive to commercialize virtual reality. And of course, that's a massive opportunity. But at the same time, we have to be methodic and you have to be systematic and you can't throw both jump with two feet into the first idea that pops into your head what you can develop because it's so dynamic. There's so many ways to go about it. You really have to be method methodical and systematic. So that's the first risk, choosing the wrong track to, to go down, the wrong fundamental. So second risk is the technology itself is developing and it's relatively compared to what we have now to what we have had in the last 20 years it looks advanced but if you understand virtual reality and where how, how advanced it can be you understand that we're still very relatively primitive technology in terms of where we could go it's not adapted to our biology as humans completely so for example there's our eyes which are important is the way we, we process the information. So whether it's going to be healthy for our brains, or the part of our brains that process what we're seeing with our eyes, we're not sure how healthy that is. We're not sure what long-term problems could could result from multiple hours of looking at a, a screen which is literally centimeters away from your eye. Currently, the research available on the negative health effects of virtual reality concentrating on the eye are quite positive in the sense that your eyes become used to how far away the, the screen is from your eyes and only if someone has 
pre-existing eye conditions will, will, will they will they be adversely affected so there's no real evidence to say that there's negative health effects but but these need to be further further researched so that's the um, direct possible negative health effects and, and that's definitely a possibility that's a risk the other risk is the, the social aspect how is virtual reality medical education going to change the social aspect of medicine and healthcare Healthcare itself relies a lot on, te- on teamwork and it helps when people like each other. There's a scope for multiple virtual reality users to be in the same environment and for it to be as social as sitting in a room together. But the risk is that that's not focused on. So that needs to be focused on from the start to make it a social experience as opposed to it becoming an isolating experience where people, you know, you can compare it to that image of the gamer that you have in their basement they're overweight, they eat too much, and they just their life is about that that video game, and, and we, we don't want that. So there are risks, but the benefits from introducing virtual reality into medical education outweighs them, at least based on current studies. And people such as Dr. Raphael are at the forefront of this developing industry. With VR, we will see a new way of teaching doctors, which won't only benefit the population they are trying to help, but also the industries that train and fund healthcare.